so more. The Simpsons Treehouse of Horror 10 had probably the worst intro out of all the Treehouse of Horrors so far that I'd watched. Before they had like cool tombstones or cool warnings or cool, like just cool stuff. And this year we have Kang and Kodos doing the Saturday Night Live skit crap on stage and they are bombing on stage. And like it's got like the crowd just like lame. Well, like, yeah, that's how we the audience are watching this crap of them just fucking cracking jokes and it being horrible. And yeah, they show it again. And I'm like, this is the intro. And then it cuts to the family throwing it back to previous seasons that were awesome. And I'm like, oof, it's going to be a long year. The Simpsons accidentally parody I Know What You Did Last Summer in I Know What You Did Did Lead. And it's just, this, this whole Simpsons episode was real weird. Like, I don't know what it is after season 9 and 10, like seasons 10, 11, 12. So there's a couple seasons after the Golden Era are so weird and just like, just off and like not cool. But this one, they decide to like rip off. I know what you did last summer, which was a weird movie anyway, and it's it only been out for a couple of years, so like, there was a lot more classics they could have did, because the, the last couple of years they're doing classic scary movies, now they're doing I know what you did last summer, it's just like, uh, okay, but yeah, Marge accidentally hits Flanders with her car, and they're just like, damn, this could be some trouble, so they decide to just do what any of us would do, and just cover it up, and I'm like, this is gonna be fine, like, there's not gonna be anything bad happening at all in this episode. I gotta say, I did not like I Know What You Did Last Summer, or just that era of horror movies, I didn't like Scream, the faculty was pretty good. Also, Idle Hands was awesome, but that whole era of like teeny bopper scary movies where it's like, it's one of us as the killer. It was Brad. He's mad at JD because she cheated on him with Scott, and now he's gonna kill everybody with a screwdriver. And I'm like, I don't wanna see that. I miss like 80s horror, like the blob. And it's like, there's a fucking blob, and it's eating everybody, and we can't kill it because the fucking blob. Not fucking Scott and Janie pissed at each other because they're fucking around. So, yeah, I hated this movie. And I don't know why The Simpsons would parody it, because it's just ass. And they made like 10 different sequels, at least two. Fuck it. After The Simpsons have the audacity to hit Ned Flanders with their car, they're just running around gallivanting with his body trying to fake his, his freaking death. And it's just so weird. It's like, this is the definitely when The Seasons of Simpsons was just weird and like, why? You know what I mean? Like they go from having vampires and stuff to like faking Ned's Fucking murder. I guess that's pretty funny, but still just like, okay, y'all, let's go. So, like, he tries to throw Ned's body off the roof, but, like, his fucking wife doesn't see it. And then she dies later in the show. And they're like, dude, this show is dark, man. I used to love this show. Now it's crazy. So he just fucking is like, oh, yeah, I'm having a heart attack. And just throws Ned's body in the damn doorway. And it's awesome. And I'm like, damn, dude, I, I miss when it was just fun, you know? So, the Simpsons are at Ned's funeral, and they are guilty as fuck, if you ask me. It's like, how do you not, how do you just stroll into a goddamn funeral that soon? Especially when you did that shit. It reminds me of Better Call Saul, when Jimmy and Kim do a fucking, the one dude's fucking thing. I'm not gonna spoil it, but like, you know that you felt like shit being at that dude's funeral. Damn, the last episode of Better Call Saul was some shit, wasn't it? I don't know if you saw it, but I was just like, really, bro? Really? Damn, that was a downer ending. Anyway, everybody knows that The Simpsons did this shit and they, they think they got away with it, but they're actually like not really. And they also have like a bloodlust now. They're like, I just want blood. Like I have a lust for blood for some reason. And Homer's just like, this is jerk ass Homer. Like everybody hates this version of Homer going forth for the next couple of years. But somebody knows what they fucking did and it's like, ooh. Somehow the killer gets in the house, writes all over the walls in blood, turns it from day into night and a thunderstorm and is in the freaking house. And they're just like, damn, we were just sitting here chilling. And now it's the dead of night and they're in the fucking zombie room. And he wrote all over the car too. And I'm like, how did he do all that, dude? Like, how did he do all that? And they're just chasing him and they're chasing him or he's chasing them. He's chasing them. What the fuck ever? I don't care. They're out of gas anyway, so no one's chasing fucking shit, so fuck you. 
and he's gaining on him, dude. He's fucking gaining, and he's gonna get him. And you're like, dude, this is the end of the fucking Simpsons, season ten, the end of it. But then Homer's like, we can all escape to the pet cemetery or the roller disco, and we can party the night away. And then it turns out that it's just freaking Flanders. Flanders is the goddamn killer, and <clears throat> everything's fine. It's actually not fine because it turns out that Ned Flanders had been bitten by a freaking werewolf. And don't you hate when that happens? You're just minding your own business and a freaking, you just turn into a freaking werewolf in the moonlight. And then after that happens, you get hit by the freaking Simpsons and they just swerve on you. And he gets hit by a car and bit by a werewolf in the same night. That's some bad freaking luck, bro. But he survived all that crap, and now he's there to, like, I guess, like, eat the Simpsons because it's another freaking full moon. And he turns, dude. He freaking turns just like that awesome movie, American Werewolf in London, which I should talk about because it's a classic. And I guess he just freaking eats Homer. Like, he just eats Homer's ass, and they just, they just, which is awful. You're like, damn, I wasn't expecting all that. I wasn't expecting this at all. It's so, it's just, I, I don't know. But yeah. He eats them. And that's it. No joke. While we're talking about werewolves, American Werewolf in London is one of the best werewolf movies, one of the best scary movies ever made, and it's kind of like an undead movie too, because it's like the, the, the victims of the werewolf come back as like specters or demon goblin things or whatever, but it's really unnerving and disturbing because the one dude's friend gets eaten by the first werewolf that bites him and he comes back as like a ghost or something and it's real sad. And you're like, dude, this sucks because there's really no way to like reverse the curse, so he's kind of just like, going down and it's painful and horrible but he has this hot ass nurse that like takes care of him if you know what i mean because he definitely takes care of his ass but then he turns into a werewolf and you're like that sucks and there's like nothing anybody can do about it you just sort of like all right ah i know like get a gun i guess because there ain't shit we can do to help this guy like so everybody in this movie is pretty much done and werewolf eaten and it's awesome Bart and Lisa actually get superpowers, maybe from Compound V. No, actually a radio radioactive thing zaps them and they get powers from that. I just didn't show that. But yeah, they get powers, so they're like, we're gonna become superheroes and we're gonna fight crime and serve justice and all that shit. And Bart's like, I don't know about that, sis, because I wanna cause trouble and mayhem and pretty much be a super villain. So I'm just like, dude, this guy's like Homelander. He's the fucking Homelander of the shit because he just wants to use his powers for whatever the fuck. But he's got a cool costume. I don't know what the fuck Lisa's doing with that costume. I'm like, can you get some fucking shoes for that girl, please? But whatever. So they become Stretch Dude and Clobber Girl. And they're just getting a superhero hijinks. Just saving the fucking day. And causing the opposite of trouble, which is safety and calamity and shit. And he gets Homer's watch. And they beat up Saddam Hussein. They didn't even get Saddam at this point. Yeesh. Can't show that. But anyway, yeah, crazy fucking shit. And I wonder what's going to happen to them. And Bill Clinton, what the fuck? I'm really glad superheroes aren't really real because if they were, they, it would be just like the the show The Boys. Like that's why when I watch that show, I'm like, yeah, we'd be at the mercy of these superpowered freaks. Like this guy loses his girlfriend because A Train is in a rush, and then like Homelander is a d bag. But like that's how it would be if Superman was a real dude. He'd be terrifying. It's like, you gotta be really, really freaking nice around this Superman dude, or he's gonna laser blast my freaking face off. And Homelander does that a freaking lot. And there's like a little Wolverine chick running around, there's a French dude, there's Mother's Milk with the power of rap music and shit, and it's just a great freaking show. And I'm just so glad that like people don't have superpowers. At least not yet, knock on wood. You know what I mean? Because like, even in the show, it's like, it's just a chemical that they give to people to give them powers, and it's just like, yeah, that's how it would fucking be. It'd be awful. Lucy Lawless, also known as Xena, the warrior princess, who was really big in the 90s, swear to God, big show, is actually kidnapped by the Collector. And I don't know if you watch Xena, but Xena and Lucy Lawless could kick the Collector's ass at any second because she was so badass and intimidating. But I guess, like, he's got magnets, and nobody knows how magnets work, so he just kidnaps her with his little Honda and he's got a fucking hatchback with a crane on the end of it. And that's what, all you need to get a lady, nerd dudes, is just a big ass fucking magnet. And just dedication, I guess, because he definitely goes for it. Comic book guy, 
Uh, I don't know, because there's a lot of dudes that are just like that, so fuck comic book guy. But yeah, Barton Lee's really using their lame-ass powers to do freaking chores when comic book guy just drives by and he's got Xena right there and they're just like, oh shit, we could probably save her, you know, we should do that. That's pretty gnarly that The Simpsons got Xena to be on the damn show. I mean, Xena was a big show back in the day. So was Hercules. I remember Hercules being a great show. Xena, I don't really remember anything. I don't remember Xena being as good as Hercules because I feel like Xena faced lower level threats than Hercules. Because I remember Hercules would fight like giants and shit and Xena never did that. She was always fighting regular ass people. And I'm like, well that's cool. She whooped a lot of ass. She had that cool throwy fucking blade thing and she was like, she was badass. But still, you know, and then like she was on Hercules too. It was great. So yeah, Xena, it's cool. Go watch Xena. Fuck it. The Collector has all these badass. I mean, I don't know if they're exactly badass. Like all these nerdy ass figures in plastic bags, just sealed. And one thing I noticed is he has Doctor Who. Doctor Who would have broken out of that bag and beat the shit out of the Collector in like two seconds. But I guess everyone's just chilling, you know, because they the fucking Bart and Lisa as superheroes show up and they're going to save the day. But the thing is, they're not actually that good as superheroes because he has a, a phaser that may or may not work. And he just sort of dispatches the fuck out of both Bart and Lisa with their superpowers. Like, look, he just fucking, and I mean, of course, Bart has to look at his adults. Oh, look, I love the beads. So, yeah, Lisa gets shot. She's knocked a freak out. Like, Bart's dipping and dodging like an asshole. But then he gets fucking the worst knockout ever. Look at this shit. Look what happens to Bart. Bap! And he gets hit in the fucking head. And you're like, you guys need more practice. With great power comes great responsibility. And you guys need some training because that sucked. So Bart and Lisa suck at being superheroes, but they just sort of started, so that's fair. But uh, comic book guy, the collector, has the double-sided lightsaber from Star Wars Episode 1, The Phantom Menace. Ooh, wee. I wish lightsabers were real though, because those would be badass to have. But he opened his like an idiot. And now the value is going to go down on the black market when he tries to sell it, if he ever gets the urge to sell it. And he should know better. But he also falls in the loose site. Now he's going to get stuck in statue mode. And you're like, all right, cool, man. But like, I don't know, that was kind of anticlimactic. I thought they, Bart and Lisa would do some more like, some more badass stuff. Like I thought Nelson and... Millhouse would get powers too somehow. They should have all got powers. I don't know. They could have had the seven. But Lucy Lawless apparently can fly because she has magical powers too. And she's a badass. And that's it. And like, I remember watching this scene where Darth Maul fights Qui-Gon Jinn and Obi. And I was like, why are they not beating him? Like, why can't they beat him? There's two of them and there's one of him. Like, he has a double-sided lightsaber. But look at him. I'm like, look at them fight. I'm like... What are y'all doing? I'm like, he's fucking beating you. I remember watching this as a kid and being so pissed. And I was like, what are you, just like, I couldn't understand why they, how he could just sword fight the fuck out of both of them and him. They, they are Jedi masters and they have the force. And I'm just like, he's serving both of those motherfuckers up against no big thing. And he fucking actually kills Qui-Gon Jinn. And I was like, what? And then, I mean, and then of course, then he gets killed too, out of nowhere. And I was like, this movie is fucking weird, dude. This movie is weird. But the Padre scene was pretty cool. But this, I was just like, I was perplexed for real. I was like, how is he that good that they can't beat him? But still, he's Darth Maul. He's a bad motherfucker. The Y2K episode of The Simpsons was kind of crazy because, like, it does remind me of that time when, like, people did think, like, the Y2K shit was gonna happen because I was like a kid and like uh, anyway the fucking our neighbor was at the fucking house had a big ass like thing of water and they were just filling up things with water for the, like the I remember it was like that day and like for the night they were like filling up fucking tons of water and like I think they had like a stockpile of shit and I was like damn I was like, is something gonna fucking happen? It's like, I think at that time, the actual day of the people knew that it, nothing was gonna happen that night because they'd already fixed it somehow and shit. But like, in October, when this episode of The Simpsons came out and they were talking about it, people were like, didn't know. They're like, it's gonna go down. It's gonna go down on 99. And I'm like, man, this is fucking 20. Everything after the everything after the 90s is just ass. And they're like, man, this sucks. So. 
1999, just the 90s in general was a crazy time, but 99 in general because there's a thing called the Y2K bug where it's something about computers eating each other's butts or something where something's not working out. I don't really remember, but it has something to do with numbers and everything goes crazy. It was supposedly supposed to go crazy and all hell was supposed to break loose when the clock struck midnight on 1999 slash 2000. So that was just the era. Like it went from everything being cool in the 90s to like literally the second it turns into the 2000s, we're gonna be effed in the A. And like, you know, it's pretty much true. It was like, look what happened in the past 22 years. Like, look what happened. So yeah, The Simpsons do a 1999 scary Halloween episode and it's just about what if everything did go crazy? And like seeing the planes fall out of the sky in 99, heavy stuff, man. So the Y2K bug has uh, the computer chip in everything that's in everything going crazy. They apparently have a computer chip in their waffle maker that tells the waffles what's going on on the internet. And there's a helicopter and they're at church and everyone at church is like, damn, this sucks. I need to pray so I don't go to freaking hell. And of course, the fucking Reverend Lovejoy is fucking just raising his shit. And Ned is wearing the Beetle boots. I'll admit, that did make me laugh when I watched it. Because I don't know why. I can imagine Ned wearing them leather-ass boots. And being like, why today? So then they start looting everything. Which is probably exactly how it would be. Because it's like, I fucking lived in New Orleans. So like I know how shit goes when shit gets apocalyptic. And it's not fun. You know? It's really not fun. But, you know, Homer's gonna loot Marge some cool gifts and presents and shit. Hopefully he gets her a Nintendo 64. That'd be legit. <coughs> the apocalypse sucks. But anyway, they find Krusty, who has a heart attack due to his pacemaker, having a Y2K battery thing in it somehow, and they take his ticket to a rocket to Mars, and they're gonna do that. But only Lisa and Marge and Maggie are allowed on that rocket. But Homer and Bart end up sneaking onto another rocket that's got all these annoying ass celebrities on it. And they just eject themselves. And the only reason I'm brazen through it is because I'm like, I thought this was such a lame Halloween episode when I first saw it. I was like, this isn't scary at all. It wasn't spoopy. It wasn't creepy. There was no like vampires or anything in it. I'm like, this, as far as Halloween episodes go, this one's kind of like, whatever. I mean, this part's pretty cool with her heads pop and stuff, but you're just like... One cool thing that happened, though, was the WWE had its own little countdown to the millennium, and we were all just like, what is this gonna be? What is it? And I remember watching it this night being like, oh shit. And the fucking countdown was happening, everybody was like, oh man, this is gonna be so cool, it's gonna be so freaking cool. And The Rock was in the ring like, oh man, what is this? You son of a bitch, man. Suck my holy flappy folds. Pick my flappy foldy holes. 